Moshuehu represented his country on 73 occasions and starred in the 1996 Africa Cup of Nations Bafana Bafana team. Arguably one of the greatest footballers to ever kick a ball in South Africa, John Shoes Moshuehu was one of the architects of Bafana Bafana's emergence as a force in the 90s. Shoes began his career in Deep Kloof with a local amateur side called the Blue Whales before he joined Kaiser Chiefs reserve side. Failure to break into the first team led him to join giant Blackpool, where he shared the pitch with the likes of Fanny Madida and Juri Bantwana. In 1991, he helped Blackpool reach the JPS Cup final, where he ended up on the losing side against Dynamos. In 1993, he returned to Amakosi before leaving for Turkey when he joined Turkish giants Frenabachi. Unbelievable, and he's been a role model for most of us coming from the township. I mean, I've known issues from, from, uh, from Deep Kloof in, in, in Zone 3, and I mean, we live even close together. Very fit, you know, always competitive, and it was very sad, you know, to see uh, the state he was, he was in. Uh, we mourning, you know, the big loss of a great man who's contributed a lot to the game. His most coveted award came in 1996 when Bafana Bafana won the African Cup of Nations and he scored four goals in the tournament, including a brace in a sensational display against Ghana in the semi-final. He was the uh, Barishnikov of, of football. Um, he was quick in the ball, he would slow it down, he had the ability to go inside, outside, terrific balance. Um, and as a player, uh, absolutely. Well, certainly as a player, he said, never take the ball away. If you set your shoes, you're going to turn up at 11 o'clock and we're going to kick off uh, at 3 in the morning. He would be the first to play. His enthusiasm for the game uh, held no bond. Um, as a off the, the ball, off, the, off the, the, the team team game, he was fantastic. He would um, always get the guys... Um, Together, he was never one that led us in the songs and things like that. That was Mark Williams, but he always was there and uh, he led by example. He was a quiet type of person, uh, but very, very strong in different ways. His return to South Africa saw him reunite with Chiefs for his third and final time under Ted Dimitri. It was the skill that he showed during that period that saw him earn a national call-up in 1994 at the age of 38. Cancer ultimately brought upon Mashwaya's demise at the age of just 49. ANN 7 Sports Desk. And as you can imagine, the entire footballing community throughout South Africa has met this news with tremendous shock. We're joined now over the phone from Rustenburg by one of Moshuehu's former coaches, Ted Dumitru. Ted, a very good evening to you. How did you react when you heard the news of John Shoes Moshuehu's passing? Uh, good evening, uh, Peter. Um, an extremely sad day for all the football people in, in, in South Africa and definitely abroad as well. Um, I think we lost a symbol, a symbol of excellence, a symbol of achievement both on the field and in life. Um, Shoes was inspiring um, players, he was inspiring coaches as myself, he was inspiring media and every supporter in this country who loves uh, football. Um, it's, it's something that is difficult, to, particularly for me, to, to, to go through. Um, we uh, were working together. He was uh, one of my key players in, in 2003. Um, I gave him a free role in the team. He managed to, to, to help the team to win the championship. He wasn't a striker, but he was the top goal scorer in the team operating from the midfield. Um, he made things that um, so, so uh, uh, impressively that Many, many other players, uh, they were thinking of, of Shoes Show as the best football ever produced by South Africa. Um, it's, it's extremely difficult to replace that type of uh, personality in football. Um, one of his biggest attributes was that he was resisting all the influences, coaching influences, 
not to change to, to more of a European approach. He was so much in love with his African nature. I remember in 2001, you, you won the, the title in, in, in Turkey with uh, Fenerbahce, and I received a call from the media because I was also coaching before in, in Turkey, and they said to me, it's absolutely amazing. This player doesn't, doesn't change at all. He's always an African player on the field. And, and because of that, the team is benefiting so much. That was Shuz Moshev, and um, his, his memories will, will be eternal. Um, there, there are so many stories, good stories about Shuz. will will take us the whole night and maybe the whole day tomorrow to talk about. Uh, I would say may his all rest in peace, and let's keep, keep Shuz Moshev in mind as one of the brilliant examples of South African football. Ted, you mentioned that uh, he was here back here in 2003 under your guise. What kind of an influence did Shoes have on the younger players in the squad? Well, we, I give him a free role. And obviously, by having a free role, he was influencing different players in different positions. They were learning a lot from him how, how to cover uh, different areas of, of the field and how to... to to, to shift sometimes from a very simple play combination to a more sophisticated one. Um, I, I remember in, in many, many uh, instances, I allowed him to, to, to run the exercises with the younger players so they can have an even more direct approach to his, to his experience, to his brilliant, brilliant mind of, of footballer. And it was a total benefit to, to Kaiser Chiefs. And, uh, as I said, he came at the time that we were not the best team in the league. We didn't have the best strikers. Um, in, in fact, we were very, very short on that department. And, and he came with solutions, and, and he came with a, with a way of approaching the game that was irresistible for the opposition. And scoring eight, eight goals from, from the midfield position was, was something that you know the, the, the team uh, took advantage, and we won the, 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 the league with that. Ted, you mentioned that there will be many uh, John Shoes Moshwe stories. What's your favorite one? Oh, um, the, 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 favorite, the favorite story is that I, I remember one day we, um, we, we, we planned a training session and all of a sudden uh, the, the big storm came and it was raining and so forth. And um, every, I, I said to the players, it's useless, we cannot waste our time. Um, please, guys, we'll go home and we'll meet again tomorrow. Um, I was very, very surprised, pleasantly surprised to see that Shu said, uh, Coach, can, can I ask one favor? Can, can I ask to, to, to train even if this rain is so heavy? And, and to me, that was something very, very special. Uh, he took one ball and together we went outside in that terrible, terrible storm. And he did train for 30 minutes in those horrible conditions. I will never forget that example of professionalism and dedication. Ted Dimitri, thank you so much for your time tonight, live on the phone from Rustenburg. Very much appreciated. And from Rustenburg, we're going to go to Durban now, where former Bafana Bafana captain Neil Tovey is joining us on the line. Neil, a very good evening to you. What was your reaction to the tragic news this afternoon? Yeah, it, it, it was kind of... Um, a huge shock because I've spoken to Mark Williams uh, about an hour hour earlier, uh, and him and Phil, the singer, were, were on their way to the hospital. Uh, I was there the night before where I met his mom, and I saw shoes the night before, before I did some TV work. And, um, and uh, you know, uh, so I sort of I knew what Mark and, and Phil were, were going into, you know, that shoes was not well. He... He, he, you know, it, it was, it's going to be very, very soon, unfortunately. But I just hope that, you know, it, it happened without suffering. Neil, I was still a schoolboy when uh, you guys won that 1996 Africa Cup of Nations. And I remember as a young boy watching, especially that semi-final performance against Ghana, where it was very much the John Shoes Moshueo show. How do you remember that fixture and his performance in particular? Yeah, I mean... Uh, you know, that was a critical game for us. Ghana were huge, huge favourites. But I just want to take you back uh, to the opening game of the tournament, which was also pretty much uh, the best, the best uh, 
uh, opportunity it was for us to to get a great start to the to to the campaign. We needed to get rid of Cameroon, and I mean, Sue's was t- tearing them apart. The the one two he played with former singer uh, for his goal was 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 unbelievable, and that sort of set the tone for the rest of the tournament. I mean, he was uh, there to to be man of the man of the tournament, and um, that Ghana game. I mean, he just showed his quality and his oozing his class, and you know, I always. I've likened him to a thoroughbred racehorse. He was so balanced, uh, so easy to uh, to to communicate with and to talk to and, and to understand. You know, he was he was uh, an, an exceptional player. Neil, we're told that uh, Shoes was very much the clean living type. Uh, how exemplary yeah. was he to uh, oh. younger footballers? A total, total, total professional. You know, you just have to look at his his professional career. What age he finished? I mean, 42. Uh, so I mean that that says that just says it all. Uh, to play professional football at the age of 42, you know you have to have done something right, and he did plenty right. He he, he would never be he never lost the limelight. He just was in the background. He just as he trained harder and harder and, and anyone else, and just just did his thing and kept kept quiet and uh, and. Uh, but when he needed to produce something special, uh, that's when he came to his fore and he you know he was. It's just a case of, well, let's give a ball to shoes and doctor, you know. And you knew something was going to happen. You just knew something unbelievable was going to happen. Former Bafana Bafana captain Neil Toby, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. And from Durban, we're going to come back up to Gauteng, where our reporter Benjamin Lashoro is standing by, just at the uh, uh, clinic where... Uh, Moshe passed away earlier today, Morningside Clinic outside Santon. Uh, ben, good evening to you. Uh, how busy is it outside the clinic? Good evening, Peter. Um, to tell the truth, it's not really busy here outside the clinic. Uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's one of those places where you wouldn't have a lot of people. Even the media is not allowed uh, too close to, 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 to the gate. So I, I don't think a lot of people would be allowed to come to, to, uh, to, to the hospital here. But I do think that uh, starting from tomorrow or so, you will uh, find people uh, at the house uh, where he was staying just to pay their respects. Uh, so right now it hasn't been all that uh, uh, busy. I'm told also that uh, the minister uh, is going to see the family tomorrow. So we haven't seen uh, too many uh, uh, people arriving, big name people arriving, or just uh, ordinary people coming to pay their respects. So it, it has been really, really quiet. The family actually left uh, just about uh, 45 minutes ago. Uh, they, they, I understand they will be all coming back tomorrow. The body is still here, obviously. So the family left, they went back to the house. Uh, uh, it, they, they obviously looked very distraught, Peter. You can understand at a time like this, and w- when you're trying to uh, obviously push for, for 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 confirmation of some of the things, you you're really pushing your luck, and you you really uh, doing that in, in in the most respectful of manners, uh, because it's a, it's a family in mourning. You don't want to uh, be uh, uh, the media person who's uh, uh, a bit insensitive. Benji, uh, John Shoes Moshwe is the kind of player that uh, the likes of you and I grew up with. Uh, we watched him uh, as we, uh, I suppose, garnered this love for the sport that we have. What's your favorite memory of John Moshwe? Well, uh, Peter, I heard you speak to, to, to Neil just now, and you, you spoke about uh, the, the 96 uh, semi final against Ghana. I suppose that's the game that really everybody will uh, remember him with. I, as I spoke to Lucas Khatebe a little bit earlier, I did speak to him about that where Shoes uh, scored a brace. And it, it was, as you said, the, the Shoes Mushweu show. It, it was, uh, everybody was just dancing to his tune. So it is a game that nobody will, will forget get uh, you know in 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 in, in any time soon and also some of the games that he played for Kaiser Chiefs when he came back into the country after his stint in Turkey where he played for a, a big club like Fenerbahce he came back uh, to play for Kaiser Chiefs having played for them before in the 90s uh, he came uh, interestingly as a 37 year old can you imagine any anybody uh, who's, who's 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 about 34 35 retires but not shoes he came back to South Africa 
uh, to play football, to continue playing football. And uh, you, 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 you were saying with Neil that he was the uh, healthy living player, he was the, the live right player. So a lot of young players can learn a lot from uh, guys like Shoes to sort of prolong your career. You don't have to retire uh, when you're 35, as, as is the common thing in South African football uh, or some, in, in some other countries in the world. So he was the, 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 that type of player that everybody should look forward to. Also, I have never, as a fan or in, in my working career in the media, heard anything bad about shoes in the papers. I have never seen him either on the front pages or in the back pages that is negative. He, he, he was just that sort of guy that you, you just wonder, where is Shoes? And not because there was anything wrong, he, he was hiding, he, he just didn't like the limelight, as Neil said. I remember last year when I tried to uh, interview him, when I actually tried to bring him to studio, and he told me, I'm, I'm done, I'm done with that. I, I don't you know, like being on TV. That's just the sort of guy Shoes was. Quite right. Benjamin Lashora, thank you so much uh, for joining us tonight live here on ANN7 Prime. And SAFA President Danny Yodan has also paid tribute to the late John Moshwe as tributes from politicians and sports administrators alike continue to come through. Yodan said the former Bafana midfield magician was a credit to the sport in this country. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sad loss. We were together, uh, Lucas and myself, last night with him. Uh, he was still uh, arranging a smile and wave to us uh, um, and that was only last night and when we left here yeah, uh, we never had in our minds that uh, that was the last farewell. So it came as a shock, uh, a great sadness, we lost uh, an ideal player, an example to, to young players very sad news indeed and that's where we're going to leave it for now and Zinga I'll have more for you again in the next hour